So late last night, a very interesting discovery was made. Nintendo of Japan's website actually listed two games as coming out on the Wii U, yes, the Wii U, on December 30th, Banjo-Kazooie and Blast Cores. Now since then, theories have been flying around about why these games were listed for very obvious reasons, and it caused so much of a stir that Nintendo of Japan actually responded to the situation. Now because of this, many people think that, well, where there's smoke, there's fire, and there might be more to this than initially meets the eye. So what exactly happened here? Is this a realistic thing? And is Nintendo essentially teasing Rare Replay on the Nintendo Switch like many people feel that they are? Well, let's talk about it. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And yes, I did pick my nose in yesterday's video and forgot to edit it out. Stuff happens, man, stuff happens. But without any further ado, let's talk about this weird listing for Wii U games, the Microsoft and Nintendo connection, and whether or not this means that Rare Replay could potentially come to the Nintendo Switch. So realistically speaking, you can look at Microsoft and Nintendo's relationship and see that it's a pretty strong relationship. Microsoft obviously has a lot to gain by putting their games on Nintendo systems because, well, they don't do anything in Japan. So it does benefit Microsoft in some way, shape, or form to work with Nintendo on things. I don't think they see Nintendo as a competitor, more as like an ally. We, of course, have seen lots of things like cross-platform play happen with Microsoft and Nintendo. Games like Fortnite, games like, of course, Minecraft, which was a first party Microsoft title and then released on the Nintendo Switch with Nintendo Switch specific related things that were available on the Wii U. But the cross platform play really got a lot of people thinking, maybe there's more to this relationship than meets the eye. Then of course games like Cuphead and Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of Wisps came to the Nintendo Switch, all of which were first party Microsoft games or games that Microsoft themselves funded. So obviously there's some sort of working relationship going on here. Now Phil Spencer as of recently has sort of downplayed this relationship said oh you know don't expect too much from it anymore but i really don't think that's a true facet because i think it's beneficial for all companies involved like i said nintendo gets more games on their nintendo platforms such as the nintendo switch and microsoft gets a little impact in japan where they constantly struggle so i think this is a reasonable relationship of course there's been other things such as the potential of an xbox live sort of coming to the nintendo switch possibly xbox game pass and an a la carte style that doesn't have everything that Xbox Game Pass brings to the table, but really, when you even look at the future and all these studios that Microsoft is acquiring, such as Bethesda, are Bethesda games still going to come to the Nintendo Switch? I really think they will, because like I said, Microsoft doesn't view Nintendo as a real competitor, but they used to, because back in the day, you gotta remember, when the original Xbox came out, Microsoft was spending a lot of money, and one of the biggest acquisitions that they made was a company called Rare. Now, many N64 fans have very fond memories of Rare, because well, Rare made some of the best games on the platform, games like Banjo-Kazooie, games like Conker's Bad Fur Day, Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, Jet Force Gemini, like Rare was a great company when they were working with Nintendo. Of course, they went to Microsoft after the buyout and well, really didn't do all that much. There were some questionable games that Rare released over time, and since then, Rare has just become a former shell of themselves. But one game that Rare did release on Microsoft platforms, the Xbox One in particular, was of course Rare Replay, which was a company compilation of various games throughout their history, arcade games, N64 games, even some of those awesome Xbox 360 games like well, Perfect Dark Zero. I really did not like Perfect Dark Zero. I thought it was a pretty game when it first came out. I was like, wow, this looks really good. This is a next generation title, but that gameplay just, ugh, it really, really wasn't for me. So why do people think that Rare Replay has the potential to come to the Nintendo Switch now and Nintendo essentially teased it? Well, like I said, late last night, a very interesting discovery was made over on Nintendo of Japan's official website. So this isn't some third party website. This isn't some person just making things up. This was literally on Nintendo of Japan's website. And there were listings for two games on there, Banjo-Kazooie's Adventure and Blast Dozer as releasing on December 30th for, for the Wii U. Now you gotta remember, the Wii U did have an N64 virtual console. You could play games like Mario Kart 64, and of course, Super Mario 64 on your Wii U because, well, it had a virtual console, something that the Nintendo Switch lacks. But of course, you gotta remember, Nintendo hasn't done anything with the Wii U since, well, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, that was the last game Nintendo released on the Wii U. They have done nothing with this system in the four, nearly four years since the system has been dead, but now all of a sudden there are listings for two 
games that just happen to be N64 games that just happen to be rare games for the N64's virtual console on the Wii U. Now, what makes this really interesting is when you look at the actual listing for it, this isn't just like some sort of half-assed thing. It actually has Microsoft of Japan listed as the publisher for this game, which would make perfect sense because these are now Microsoft IPs as Microsoft does own things like Banjo-Kazooie and Blastozer, or as it's known in the United States, Blast Cores, which is kind of an underrated game. I actually really like that game. So what exactly happened here? You know, this doesn't seem like something completely random. This is something that you would actually have to do and type in and put up on your website and putting Microsoft in Japan as the publisher really led a lot of people to believe, well, maybe these games are actually going to come out. Since then, Nintendo of Japan has actually updated their website with the following information. Banjo-Kazooie's Adventure and Blastozer have been posted as Wii U software delivered on December 30th of 2020, but they will not be delivered. We apologize for the correction. And this was made on December 30th of 2020 as well. So this caused so much of a stir that Nintendo of Japan actually had to comment on this situation and say, no, these games aren't coming out on the Wii U, which I don't think is a very satisfactory answer because like I said, you actually had to put this on your website. You had to take time and effort. You listed Microsoft of Japan as the publisher, which is what it would be. So now many people are thinking, well, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And what could this potentially mean? Of course, there is the rumor that in the N64 emulator code that was used for Super Mario 64, there was actually rare games embedded in that thing. So many people were thinking, well, maybe this was leftover stuff from the Wii U era. One of the games, of course, was Perfect Dark that was found in that source code, which we talked about when it was first discovered many months ago. But obviously, there, there's something going on here. Do I think this is something that's going to come out on the Wii U? I mean, no, of, of course not. Like, Nintendo isn't releasing anything on the Wii U. They haven't released anything on the Wii U in nearly four years. The Wii U is a dead platform, which was a great platform. You know, the virtual console on there was great. There were some great first party titles as well. But realistically speaking, Nintendo isn't going to put any time, effort, or resources into releasing anything on the Wii U. So that leads us to the other thing, Rare Replay. Now, Rare Replay, like I said, is a collection of arguably Rare's best games of all time, arcade games. You, of course, have the N64 era of games. There's lots of quality of life improvements, such as HD visuals, controller support, different sorts of controller variations that you could do. Some of the games even feature online play. And realistically, Rare Replay is a perfect game for the Nintendo Switch. It encompasses an era of Rare when they were prominent. It encompasses an era of Rare when they were dominant, to be frank with you guys, on the Nintendo 64. When you saw a Rare game, you knew that it was going to be a top quality game. It was something that you wanted to check out. Now, Rare Replay released many years ago on the Xbox One. Of course, it is compatible with the Xbox Series X, but realistically speaking, this is a Game Pass game now. This isn't a game that is going to be making Rare or Microsoft any sort of money. So why not re-release this on the Nintendo Switch? You could charge $40 for this game like it was when it originally came out, and I think Nintendo owners and Nintendo Switch owners would be completely fine with it. I know I personally would be just to have these games to play portably and all of these sort of quality of life improvements. When you look at the relationship between Microsoft and Nintendo, Nintendo. I feel like there was some more stuff that was supposed to happen in 2020, but obviously COVID, you know, played a massive role in sort of downplaying what could have potentially been, what could, could potentially came out between these two companies. I think this relationship is far from over because like I said many times before, it is very beneficial for both of these companies to work together because they're going to make money. And at the end of the day, when you're running a business, that's the main thing. You want to make money. You want to make people happy. And for Microsoft to get a bit of a foothold in Japan, Japan by doing something like Rare Replay on the Nintendo Switch, I think it would sell very well. I'm not sure how the Japanese audience really looks at Rare. I know they're fondly remembered in the States, but I'm not quite sure how it was received in Japan. But the fact that these games were listed for the Wii U as coming out today, and then Nintendo had to do something about it and say something about it, like, there's, there's something going on here. There could, of course, be the fact that maybe N64 games are coming to the Nintendo Switch in some way, shape, or form. A lot of people, myself included do feel like the Nintendo Switch online service will be adding a new console in 2021. Now, personally, I think it's going to be Game Boy related. I think it's going to be the Game Boy Advance because then you could do both Game Boy and Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games.
games all at once you have a huge library of stuff and i think those games would be beneficial and 64 might be a little bit trickier but i guess that is another potential thing as well but i'm definitely leaning more towards rare replay being this because of the fact that these two games are included on rare replay banjo kazooie and blast Corps are both on rare replay they're both rare games and they're not nintendo first party games so why would these games be listed by nintendo of japan's website as coming to the wii u and their n64 games and the, 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 the no no it doesn't make any sense to me so it's a very interesting situation and a lot of people do feel that this is nintendo teasing rare replay on the nintendo switch and i think that's a very valid thing i'm definitely looking forward to seeing if there's any more sort of things that happen with this because like i said where there's smoke there's fire a lot of times and i definitely feel like there's something more to this story i definitely feel like something is happening and i wouldn't be surprised if rare replay does end up coming to the nintendo switch at some time in 2021 maybe nintendo of japan just let a little secret out of the bag i mean they have been suffering a lot of leaks lately so it's definitely within the realm of possibility but let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this obviously there's something going on here there has to be some sort of reason you know this is business things don't just happen without any sort of rhyme or reason so is nintendo working with microsoft on bringing n64 games to the switch is it really just going to come to the wii u and everyone's going to dust off their wii u and play banjo kazooie on it or could potentially rare replay come to the nintendo switch in 2021 let me know what you think in the comment section down below and as always guys thank you for checking out this video like i said at the start if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well if you really want to see me pick my nose you can watch yesterday's video at the 550 mark and you know i'm digging for a little bit of gold i mean things happen man things happen and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later